This is An Infinite Path, spoken word essays by Niles Heckman, some of which go on to become our documentary short subject films, half of which release freely here through the podcast, all of which can be found through your support at nilesheckman.com. Recently, a listener to this podcast had contacted me several times to leave some very heartfelt comments in regards to previous essays. He very proactively and professionally corrected a date which I got wrong and also left some other nice insights on his pro and con thoughts in regards to cryptocurrencies, as well as the potential for hemp to continue to loop back around as a major engine of economic growth, as it has always been for thousands of years. Hemp is more American than apple pie, the Declaration of Independence is written on it, and it has always been known by wiser cultures than our current unconscious, unwinnable, war-on-some-drug Nixon backwards political landscape of the past 50-plus years. Hemp is able to supply food, fuel, and medicine. William Randolph Hearst, the dark sorcerer, American newspaper magnate, monster castle builder, and man the quasi-biographical film character Charles Foster Kane from the film Citizen Kane was based off of, had hemp outlawed so he could cut down massive swaths of American forest, which take the better part of 100 years to grow back to maturity versus the three months it takes hemp to grow and provide even better quality paper, so that he could sell his propaganda newspapers. Beautiful hemp can also treat and or cure around 700 plus health ailments, especially in the form of cannabis oil which is one of numerous secret cancer cures that the pharmaceutical industry has long suppressed so that it can continue its sick care system of endless dollar sign generation from not healing but treating. A future essay on that later. And that's not even getting into the many things that hempcrete can do in the realm of construction and building. So, take everything I say with a bit of a grain of salt because I'm shooting for a constant 90% plus accuracy with perhaps 10% a bit off kilter and off mark. Let's say the inverse of Sturgeon's Law. And I accept that, but at least it was put out there in the first place, as a learning and teaching, but really learning process. Because we should never let that hold us up from sharing what we know, as sharing is caring, and we really learn the most from teaching, even if that teaching is slightly imperfect at times. Always a student. A former guest on this podcast, and I won't say directly who it is because she's a bit neurotic, used to have her father beat her when she was little and she got something wrong, i.e. not to the liking of his skewed reality tunnel. That is tragic and very sad, and she of course did not deserve that. But like the majority of child abuse does, it carried into her adult life with a continued imprint of her being afraid to be wrong at times so much to the point that she let all the little details of potential imperfection prevent her from sharing her, frankly, very deep knowledge base, thinking that the same resonance would somehow occur of her being punished. But don't give in to fear, the mind killer. Fear of having others correct some part of what you said. If they do it reactionarily, then ignore and move on. But the proactive and non-condescending way this listener, Ben, corrected me was excellent, because he learned something from listening to me, I learned something from listening to him, and I could tell he was contributing because he cared. So I'm glad he added to this conversation, and you very much can too, dear listener. This podcast URL, aninfinitepath.com, just auto-forwards to my website at nilesheckman.com slash podcast, and it is nice to get feedback on these episodes. So if you have some proactive comments to share feel free to drop them into the comments section on any episode, because frankly, I usually hear fuck all. And it would be nice to adjust those interactions into a little bit more back and forth with those that are listening that have ears to hear. We are all many things. Being a documentary photographer and filmmaker are two main focuses which are partially my hobbies and partially my professions. However, Before either of those things, I am a student of life. Anyone who's curious about the nature of existence is one as well. All of those who are inquisitive, introspective, and curious are students and will always be students, no matter what level of mastery in a specific area is achieved. They will always be students when it comes to this thing called life, 
because in reality, next to no one knows what life is really all about. The ancients studied this in the past, just like those inquisitive ones do now. And this study of the student is not only passed on by occasional and sadly rare wise elder, but is self-taught by the autodidact. The most important thing to emphasize, though, is that whether your teacher is someone else, or yourself, or both, by you always being inquisitive, you never stop learning, hence never stop being that student who's constantly asking questions of those around them, not conforming to the old patterns of old ways of doing and being, but more importantly, always asking inside yourself, why? Many of the things I share, I do because they help me learn. They act as both a journal as to what I've put out and a barometer to look back on and to know where I've been. But I know next to nothing, like the rest of us, because I doubt to ever claim to be a wise spiritual philosopher or expert occultist or esotericist, but more a student of life. It's very healthy to never think you reach the mountaintop, to stay humble and to always continue to look up and out for the mystery that lies ahead. So anything that I say in the future can be looked back upon as being mostly on the ball, but perhaps some small percentage of what was conveyed at the time maybe missed the mark a bit. Hence why I sometimes will give a disclaimer that everything I share is at my current level of understanding. Which is okay, because I'm not a guru, or a scholar, but a student. So things don't have to be perfect. None of these essays are perfect. They are always in motion, in development, and any praise or criticism received is fair enough, and is being sent from neophyte to adept, and there are always more rungs on the ladder of learning. The ladder of education. Not schooling, but education. Life is a beautiful thing, and to have a hundred good years in corporeal form may be there to give us a gift of each of us for that learning. Because learning is growing, and mistakes and failures are also learning. So don't be afraid to take on a task knowing it won't be perfect. Everything is in motion and is a work in progress. And mistakes are those bumps in the road which must be gone over to continue that motion, because you either win or you learn.